So this video is an introduction to the law of cosines. So we're going to go back to our oblique triangles, and we know that the law of sines can apply to cases where the known angle and the opposite side form a ratio. You know, So uh, if you've got A and big A, you can set up the ratio of A over sine A. However, the law of cosines we can use for cases where we do not have a complete ratio and no way to solve them. So we're looking at two different ways. What happens if you've got side angle side, right? Two sides and the angle between them. So you would basically have like A and B and then big C. So no way to set up a ratio. Uh, the other way we're going to use the law of cosines is if we have all three sides are known. Okay. So these are the two ways we're going to look at it. What is the law of cosines? Well, assume once again that we've got a triangle here where our big uh, letters are our angles and our little letters are the uh, sides opposite those angles. Uh, if we have this, then what we're going to say is <clears throat> we, the, the law of cosines is going to tell us that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Okay. Now, this is going to be fairly easy to memorize because... It starts with a version of the Pythagorean theorem, right? Which we would normally say c squared equals a squared plus b squared, but really it's just something squared equals something else squared plus something else squared. Now, we are now going to take that and we're going to subtract off twice these two letters times the cosine of this letter. Okay, so minus 2bc cosine a. Now, we would like to have an alternate form for this because this is what we would use if we're trying to solve for A, okay? Now, if we're trying to solve for A, oh, I don't know where that came from. If we're trying to solve for A, we're going to use this formula. However, what if we want to solve for big A? Well, if that's the case, then we would need to subtract. Let me get my eraser working. We would need to subtract the B squared, subtract the C squared, and then divide by the negative 2BC. So we would actually wind up with something that looks like this. Cosine A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared uh, divided by 2BC. Now, most of the time we're not going to memorize this. We're just going to use this formula and solve for cosine A. So don't think you have to memorize both of them. You really only need to memorize the one and then just figure out what cosine A is if you need to use it. And when I do these problems, I will always use the standard version of law of cosines, never the alternate form, just because I don't see the point in memorizing it. So this is what happens if we're looking for A. Well, what, have, what happens if we're looking for B? Well, if this is B, then this would have to be A and C. This would have to be A and C, and this would have to be the cosine of B. So it will look like this. And then, of course, the alternate version, we could solve for cosine B uh, and get A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. Now that leaves us with only one, the c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, or the alternate form, cosine c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. Now I know when you say it all fast and quick like that, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish, but really just sit down with these formulas and kind of just memorize the form. As long as you memorize one, all three of them can be pumped out because it's all one letter equals the other two being added together squared minus two times those two times the cosine of the first one, right? So, I mean, it's a form. So as long as you memorize that form, you'll have all three of these law of cosines down. So if you have any questions about this, just ask a question in class or shoot me a reminder.